and just gave the baby a bath and I wanted to come out and make a video. This is a video, I guess topic you would say that's just been on my heart. It's something that I've been thinking about and sometimes I have to wait for the right moment to strike to make a video and uh, that feels like right now is the moment. So I just wanted to talk about disappointment. I just get so disappointed in myself sometimes and I think everyone faces disappointment but I also feel like through disappointment God is teaching me something and he's I don't know I feel like it's something that almost like this is just the tip of the iceberg if that makes sense but it's something that I wanted to pass along because I know that we all face disappointment I would say I'm my own worst critic. I'm one of those people who are incredibly mean to themselves and hard on themselves. And I'm really good at giving advice for other people and I'm really bad at taking it for myself. And I would never talk to other people the way I talk to myself, if I'm being honest. And I'm better now than I used to be, but I struggle so hard with being a perfectionist and wanting to have everything perfect. and. I, so I get easily disappointed in myself because if you're a perfectionist, it's just very easy to set yourself up for failure because your expectations are just too high to start with. And it's just, it's tough. I, I get disappointed. Today I felt disappointed. And now let's be clear. I'm not saying I feel like disappointed 100% of the time or anything like that, but it's, but I just easily can fall into that trap of disappointment. So even today, I haven't read my Bible. I haven't read my Bible and I try to read it every day and I've been in a decent habit of that for a long time. And you know, I'm thinking, what about the time when I was scrolling my phone and I could have read my Bible, you know? I, and I feel guilty for that. And it's hard to not be disappointed and think, well, how am I ever gonna grow as a Christian? How am I ever gonna be better if I'm just scrolling my phone instead of reading my Bible? Why am I scrolling my phone? It's pointless. I'm just watching YouTube shorts and rotting my brain out. But something about being a mom and that just mental load and responsibility, sometimes you just want to just let your brain just like veg out. Uh, it's not really healthy, but so I'll get disappointed about that or I'll feel disappointed about, you know, I you know, I have a mean thought, I have a judgmental thought, resentment, whatever it is, and I'll get so disappointed and think, how can I not beat this? How can I not be better? But what I've felt God trying to tell me is if I am so focused on my inability to fail, then I'm not focused on his abilities that's a big thing for me that's that is a perfect summarization of what i feel like god has told me and i did not come up with that phrase myself i heard someone else say it and i thought wow that that really describes a lot for me that m focusing on my inability to fail if i just work hard enough if i just do good enough then i i'll be better and just in general spiritually but just in general i'll be better i'll just reach this point where I'm fully satisfied or I think I'm good or perfect or whatnot. Focusing on my inability to fail just totally forgets God's abilities. So focusing on disappointment, it's self-seeking. I'm that's a it's a distraction from God. I mean the devil can use disappointment at, to distract you from God. And I'm not saying, and so here, this is this is the trick, this is the key, because I'm not saying that that means that you get saved and you have Jesus and that's a free license to sin and that you shouldn't feel guilty for mistakes. No, that's conviction. And if you didn't feel conviction at all, that's a bad problem. You should definitely feel something if you do something wrong. But it's a balance because if you're so focused on, I messed up, I messed up, I messed up, I messed up, then you are not focusing on God and you're trying to do everything in your own power. And I don't have the answer to how you balance that. And if you have the answer, if you have, I'm sure there's people who have something uh, good advice, leave me a comment and leave a comment where other people can see it. I think a good place to start is just prayers and that's what, what I'm doing and what I'm going to do is just asking God, show me the balance between 
striving to be righteous, striving to do what God wants me to do. But when I mess up, accepting God's grace, because that's the problem. It's like the hymn that we sung Sunday at church. Uh, you know, His grace set me free. Well, you're not free. You are absolutely, I'm still living in bondage if I'm not accepting grace. And again, that's not a free license to sin. But it's like what Paul talks about. And he says, you know, it's by grace and not of works. So no man can boast. If, if I can save myself by my abilities of how good I can be, then why would I need God? But it's hard. It's And perfectionism breeds discontentment. If you set the bar just sky high, you're just never going to reach it. And you're just, you're just setting yourself up for discontentment. And it's also Paul who talks about in Philippians, I think it's chapter 4, verse 11, about contentment. And if he can be content at writing from a Roman prison, shouldn't I be able to be content at my stage of life? And that doesn't mean that I'm not trying to say that I should be content in sin or content in my mistakes, but there's just a bigger picture than getting stuck, I think, in disappointment. But it's hard. <laughs> it's just, that's so incredibly hard for me to do. And, and it's also, even Paul also talks about that he's the chief of sinners, and of course, uh, he was reformed. He was a very bad guy uh, before he was reformed, uh, you know, before he met God. But if he can say that, Think about that, about all the good things that Paul did. And if he can say, I'm the chief among sinners. I mean, isn't there something there that, I mean, his hu humility, but also he follows that up with God is good and that we should accept his grace and that there's no condemnation for those in Christ. So these are just thoughts that are running through my head, but I... I just wanted to share that because I know other people get stuck in disappointment. And also a huge thing with that, that I also feel like God has told me, maybe through, maybe this is the biggest thing he's told me through this is if I'm so focused on, oh man, you know, I messed up again. I'm not being myself in front of him. You know, does that make sense? I'm not just coming to him in full humility and saying, look, <laughs> You know, I'm I'm bad. I'm a sinner. I've messed up. I need help. Focusing on my disappointment is keeping me from being humble. And sometimes it's easy to mix the two because you think, well, part of being humble is just, you know, admitting that I'm not perfect. And that's an element of it. But if you get so focused on that, then you're focusing all on yourself and you're really not being that humble. So, I don't know. It's just messy, and I just feel that way lately. And it's just so easy to get so disappointed. And I'll be honest, though, I've dealt with this a long time. I mean, years. I mean, I'm talking probably 10 or 15 years. Um, it, it, I, I feel like, well, if, I, if I'm checking all these boxes mentally that I think I should be checking, then I'm good. But as soon as I fail, it's like I almost just can't survive it. I can't live with it. And that's so stupid. Like, I feel crazy saying that. You know, that's pride. Okay, let's talk about pride. That's a huge element of it here. Uh, but it's just funny that the pride and lack of humility could hide in disappointment. You know what I mean? Because you think, again, going back to, well, you know, yeah, I make mistakes and I should feel bad about it, right? Isn't that being humble? And again, it's there's an aspect to it, but if, it, if you go too far, then you're not relying on God. You're just relying on yourself. <sighs> so I don't know if any of that even makes sense. I hope that it does, and I hope that if you're watching this video that... You know, you know that you're not alone. I, everybody struggles with disappointment and nobody is perfect. And again, I can give really good advice and say that and say that God loves you because, oh, he loves you so much and he loves me so much. But <clears throat> uh, but it's easy to get lost in disappointment. So. I'm going to pray that's going to be my prayer is, you know, show me the balance, God, show me 
how I can strive to live for you, but not get so been out of shape when I'm disappointed, but also still uh, retain <laughs> conviction when I mess up, but how to do that in a healthy way, in a way that doesn't spurn the grace that he freely offers. So you have to drop me a comment. I, I would love to know your thoughts. I would love to know if you struggle with that, if you struggle with disappointment and being hard on yourself, and if you have any tips on just the balance, how to keep that balance. I'm going to go in and take a shower and relax, probably feed the baby another time, or maybe Austin will. We take turns and... But thank you for watching. God bless you. God keep you. And I will see you on the next one.